Hello, I am a woman in my early 40s. I am raising a 10-year-old son alone. I grew up with a single parent because my parents got divorced. So I didn't want to cause the same pain for my child. Life doesn't always turn out the way we want it to. My parents divorced when I was 15, and I ended up living with my dad. At the time, I didn't know the reason for their divorce. Later, I learned from my grandmother, whether it was true or not, that my mom was blinded by my dad's wealth and got caught up in a fraud. They divorced on the condition that the problem would be resolved for her. My father had a blunt personality and was always busy with work, so my mother may have had a hard time dealing with her loneliness. However, I couldn't forgive the things my mother did, and as a result, I was left completely alone. Even though I was an adolescent, I had no parents to guide my behavior. Whenever my dad and I were at home, it was awkward and uncomfortable. So it was not uncommon for me to leave first. Despite my father's flaws, I am grateful to him for owning a successful manufacturing company. He was always busy, but he made sure to give me plenty of spending money. This allowed me to have a comfortable adolescence without any financial worries. However, living alone with my father, there was one thing I hated to hear the most. The saying, a child without a mother, shows. I tried to hide this by using the money I had, but my friends only cared about my money and not me. This made me feel even more alone. I eventually learned that the more I tried to hide my weaknesses, the more obvious they became. Despite our wealth, I became someone who didn't show it. Except for a few close friends, no one knew about our financial status. Even my husband, who I started dating, didn't know about it. Unlike my father, my husband was talkative and empathetic. He was a kind person. I wanted him to love me for who I am, so I didn't disclose my financial status when we talked about marriage. I didn't want him to change like my mother or friends did over money. Maybe that's why my husband thought I grew up in a family with less money. He probably thought his parents, who owned a building and lived off the rent, were more successful than my dad. I didn't take it very seriously before I got married. I just didn't say anything. But when it came to money, my family was second to none. However, an unexpected problem occurred. It was that both my dad and I were just too frugal. My dad was the company president, but he still wore suits that were over 10 years old by getting them mended. I was not an affectionate daughter, so I didn't even pay any attention to how he dressed. So of course, my father went to meet my in-laws for the first time, just wearing one of those worn out suits. I too thought that I just needed to look neat, so I went to the family meeting dressed neatly and without anything special. But when my mother-in-law saw us, without even recognizing that she was being rude, she muttered to herself that it could be plainly overheard. In retrospect, that was perhaps the last chance I had to stop my marriage. Like father, like daughter, how could they be dressed like that to a place like this? Mom, everyone can hear you. Did I say something wrong? That's why I told you that you need to look around some more before getting married, didn't I? Your problem is that you're too naive. After hearing all those words, I was flustered inside, but I didn't think of making it an issue, probably because I was so nervous. My dad didn't seem to mind either and just sat there, so our dinner started like that. My mother-in-law said, however it got started, it's nice to meet you. I was the one who chose this restaurant, and I don't know if you will like the food here. My son has been raised without any lacking, so he doesn't know how to do much. But I hope you will accept him as your son-in-law. Oh, of course. My father just replied with a short answer to my mother-in-law's gracious talk. Because my dad was that way, I wasn't surprised, but it seemed my mother-in-law and my husband seemed very flustered by that. Still, my mother-in-law continued gracefully. It would have been more comfortable for you if my husband was here, but unfortunately, an urgent business came up. So I came here alone. Please eat first, and... Don't hesitate to tell us if you have anything you want to discuss about the wedding. I'm very comfortable. I'm fine with anything, so whatever the kids want, I plan to do it for them. Oh, I see. In an instant, although it was quick, I saw that my mother-in-law's expression turned cold. I thought that it might somehow affect my marriage. Thus, I was upset at my dad, and I also resented his blunt behavior. After I became an adult, I always thought that I would never get married because I might get divorced like my mother. However, after meeting my husband accidentally, 
and receiving much love and attention from my husband, he was the one that I wanted to marry more than anyone else. So I fretted inside, what if the marriage would be canceled because of my dad? My mother-in-law was having a hard time managing her expression, so she kept drinking cold water. I couldn't help but wish for this to end as quickly as possible. And it wasn't as easy as others, but I got married smoothly, contrary to my worries. I thought the only thing left was to live happily with my husband. After we came back from our honeymoon, we dropped by to see my in-laws, but what awaited me were my mother-in-law's disgruntled words. Hey, I was not gonna say, but now that I see you, I just can't let it pass. Is your father usually like that? Or doesn't he like our son? Was he reluctant to let you get married? The more I thought about it, the more upset I became. I couldn't even sleep at night. Mother, it's all a misunderstanding. My dad is originally quiet and introverted, so he may seem that way. Really? Still? Oh, well, I don't know. I honestly felt so offended that I wanted to stop this marriage. We may be in-laws, but I feel like I've been ignored somehow. As you've seen, am I someone who would be ignored anywhere? My mother-in-law was the wife of a building owner, so she was a very proud woman who felt she was in a position of respect and envy. Even though the title of the building was in my father-in-law's name, she was the one in charge of managing the whole building. So whenever she dropped by the building, all the tenants and merchants tried to be on her good side. Anyway, from that day on, I had to keep making excuses for my dad to my mother-in-law. She told me, listen carefully, even though you got married late, you may expect something as the eldest daughter-in-law in our family. But I don't care whether you're the first or second daughter-in-law. I will be nice to the daughter-in-law who is good to me. So I will only give my money to such a daughter-in-law. You also know that we have a building, right? Truthfully, did you expect something when you married my son for his money? If you want to climb the ladder, don't ignore me like your dad and be faithful to me. Before marriage, I knew that my husband's parents had a building, but I didn't marry him for his money. But my mother-in-law demanded that I abide by her. It astounded me, but there was another thing that was even more ridiculous. That day was the first holiday after I got married. I was nervous because I didn't know how to cook, but my mother-in-law made me prepare all of the holiday meals by myself. After she got all the groceries dumped on me, uh, my mother asked, am I doing all this by myself? I replied, why? Is there a problem? My mother then expressed her disappointment saying, well, there's not much I know how to make. Oh my Lord, this is why a girl who grew up without a mother struggles. What good is it to have a daughter-in-law who doesn't know how to do anything? She continued, I'll tell you this only once, so remember carefully. Got that? My mother-in-law then became angry and irritable as she taught me how to make the food purely through verbal instructions. As a newlywed, with no cooking experience, I was lost, but she simply said, cut this up and mix it with various seasonings. She gave a rough explanation of everything and then left the kitchen, leaving me feeling completely in the dark. It was at that moment that my husband unexpectedly came home and rolled up his sleeves to help me. He asked, can I help you? I can cook better than you. I was surprised and grateful for his offer. I then witnessed scenes that I had only seen on TV before. My mother-in-law saw her son in the kitchen and exclaimed, Oh, why are you in the kitchen? What do you know how to do? My husband confidently replied, Mom, there are many things I know how to do. She asked, Do you usually live like this at your house? He responded, No, mother. I'm just helping my wife. She was taken aback and said, Really? Don't you dare make my son work in the kitchen. I won't put up with it. She then left the kitchen, pushing my husband out. I was once again left alone in my mother-in-law's kitchen, but I had a secret solution. My sister-in-law, who had been married for four years, was coming to visit. While waiting for her, I washed and prepared all the ingredients. My husband's younger brother and his wife ran a restaurant in another state, and I had only briefly met my sister-in-law at the wedding. We didn't have much chance to talk, but we had one thing in common, our mother-in-law. I had hoped that we could bond and cook together like other sisters-in-law do and make fun of our in-laws. However, my sister-in-law didn't show up, so I relied on recipes I found on my mobile phone 
to make the various dishes my mother-in-law had instructed me to make. It was already past eight in the evening, and my mother-in-law complained about my slow progress. My father-in-law, who had become too hungry, started eating snacks and said he didn't feel like eating anymore. I didn't feel like eating anymore. I felt like a sinner at that time. Right then, the doorbell rang and I saw my husband's younger brother and his wife with a fruit basket and wrapped gifts in their arms. Mother, father, we're late. Sorry, we left after closing our restaurant, so that's why we're late. Kathy, I'm sorry. It must have been hard for you to cook all by yourself. What do you mean? She did it with me. After all, you have been working and that's why you're late. So it's okay. Is your restaurant business still going well? You wouldn't believe it. These days, I don't know what's going on, but we have so many customers that it's no joke. And mother and father, here's your spending money. Oh my, we made enough money to be able to do this. Since our business is doing well, we put in more than usual. Oh, were you in the middle of eating? It's a lot later. Don't even talk. I don't know whether this is food or what. Your sister-in-law can't cook. It's the worst. I should have come earlier to help out. My nickname is Michelin Chef. Next time, I will come earlier and teach Kathy how to cook. Right? It must be tiring to drive all the way here. Have you and your husband eaten? Yes, we ate on our way here. At this time of hour, I assumed that you guys would have finished eating, but we're okay. Why did you eat on the way at a rest stop? However, there's nothing edible here, so I can't ask you to eat even. I think my eldest son would end up starving. Mom, that's not true. I eat well at home. Why are you talking like that about Kathy to make her lose her confidence? That's right, mother. Kathy is a new bride. If you're done eating, let's talk and eat some fruit. I heard that your building has appreciated a lot these days. Is that right? Did you hear that too? That's right. It has tripled in value. It looks like my later life will turn out to be rosy. When my sister-in-law arrived, my mother-in-law's face was full of smiles and she went into the living room. It could be that the food was not to her liking, but when I saw so much food left over, I wondered if I had to clean it all up by myself. Then I started to get upset with myself. Even though my husband kept looking over at me anxiously, he was busy playing cards with his dad and his younger brother, and my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law were laughing and talking. And I wondered what I was doing alone in the kitchen, after I worked hard to clean up everything, my sister-in-law came up to me and said, Kathy, could you get me a cup of coffee? Honey, do you want one too? As if she was placing an order at a coffee shop, she casually asked me to make coffee. Coffee for her. I felt like telling her to make it herself. But since I was a newcomer, I didn't want to be on bad terms with her. So I put the water in the kettle and turned on the gas. Finally, I made coffee and was able to leave the kitchen. Then my mother-in-law and sister-in-law started to look at me as if I was a fisherman throwing bait, and they began to brag about their wealth. As I sat there quietly listening, I wondered why I had to endure this useless chatter. How fortunate for you that your in-laws are well off. When I first joined this family, they had no money, and I felt hopeless about how to manage. But because of my efforts, I was able to buy the building, and it continued to appreciate, so I'm happy. Isn't it the same for you, since all of this will eventually be yours? However, if you want to inherit it, you need to be good to me. She repeated this so many times. Children should always be good to their parents, regardless of money. But my mother-in-law kept emphasizing that we needed to be good to her if we wanted any of her inheritance. However, the person who was worse than my mother-in-law was my sister-in-law. Mother, even if we don't get the building, we will still be good to you. Couldn't you tell from watching us all this time? I'm not just saying it, but I truly feel that you are like my own mom and dad. How do you speak so kindly? You should live close to us. The one who is not helpful to me at all lives nearby, while my precious daughter-in-law lives too far away, which makes me sad. Why don't you open a branch here in my building now that you're here? Honey, honey, isn't there space available in the lobby for them? We do have the space but the people there won't leave. So that's the problem. That's true. Our building is in such a great location that no one wants to leave. Still, I will try to make a space available for you. 
Wouldn't it be great if you had a business here too? Of course, it would be great for us as well. If I open a branch here, I will do a lot for you. Oh, Kathy, I bought some fruit, so could you peel and cut some of them and bring them out? Those are very expensive fruits, so I wanted to give them to our mother-in-law. If you just sit there, it would be boring, so please help me. She acted so slyly, trying to please our mother-in-law and ordering me around, making me serve them. I was so tired that I felt like I was about to collapse, but because their younger daughter-in-law arrived late, my parents-in-law stayed up late. After midnight, I was finally able to lie down in a small bedroom. I wanted to go home immediately to sleep, but I couldn't tell my mother-in-law that I wanted to go home and then come back. My husband wasn't helpful at all. He just looked nervous and remained silent. It dawned on me then why so many wives say they hate their in-laws. After getting married, I said I hated the holidays. That's how I spent my first holidays so horribly. I returned to my usual routine, but my mother-in-law would constantly put me to work for menial tasks. And whenever she didn't like how I did it, she would talk to her younger daughter-in-law about me and compare me to her. I was about to reach my limit. I had been promoted at work before my wedding, so I became very busy. However, my mother-in-law didn't care and would demand that I do her chores regardless of my workload. She would say things like, hey, go and buy some meat later. I want to have a barbecue for a change. You do know how to barbecue, don't you? If you don't know how, ask your sister-in-law. And come earlier today by getting off early from your work. It takes a while to fire up the coals. I would try to explain that I had to do overtime at work, but she would accuse me of making excuses to avoid coming to her house. She would even question my salary and threaten to cut me off financially if I continued to act this way. I would tell her that I didn't want her money, but she wouldn't listen. I was truly busy at work and didn't know when I would be able to leave, so I offered to have the barbecue delivered to her instead. But she refused, saying that I was too smart and should be able to do both my job and her chores. She would often say that a wife should not leave the house and that I must be living without any money. She would warn me that I was digging my own grave and that I should be afraid of her over a few pennies. She would say whatever she wanted and then hang up on me. I would have a lot on my mind at work, but my mother-in-law's constant demands would give me a headache and add to my stress. I felt sorry for my husband, but instead of enjoying our newlywed life, we would often argue because of my mother-in-law. I knew I shouldn't blame my husband for his mother's behavior, but I couldn't help it. In the beginning, my husband would apologize on behalf of his mother, but eventually he started shouting at me instead. One day, he looked at me seriously and asked me to quit my job. When I asked him why, I was speechless at his answer. He believed that I could earn more money by doing more for his parents. I thought about it for a while and realized that he was right. So I decided to quit my job and focus on helping his parents. The building my parents own costs a lot of money. But if you neglect my family because you're busy with work, then my younger brother Jeffrey, who lives far away, will be the one to benefit from it. Haven't you seen how his wife acted last holiday? So are you telling me to quit my job so that you can inherit that building from your parents and you want me to butter up to your parents like your sister-in-law? Do you think that makes sense, really? Why doesn't it make sense? Honestly speaking, if we get that building, you and I could live without working for the rest of our lives. So when do you think you will get that building? Your parents are all healthy and well. So to get that building, I should quit my work? Are you a fool? That is after some time has passed. We could ask them to give it to us earlier. All right, I have not an iota of interest in that building of your parents. Right now, I love my work and I will live like now, spending money that I earn myself in comfort. That's your problem. People say that those who have no money are usually greedy, but you're the opposite. But I am different. I can't give up on that building, so I want you to cooperate with me somewhat. It was shocking. I thought my husband wasn't the type of person who was so stuck on money. I had thought about revealing the truth about myself that I wasn't in need financially when the time was right. But when he told me that he couldn't give up on his parents' building, 
I suddenly became fearful. Then the second holiday came around. Again, like the last time, my sister-in-law gave the excuse that she was busy and came late to our in-law's house. The second holiday passed smoothly because I had prepared the holiday food in advance at home because I didn't want to be subjected to that again. This time, my sister-in-law sat right next to our mother-in-law and acted charmingly as if she was wary of me. She was buttering her up, but I could see clearly through her. Mother, do you still clean the whole building and manage it all by yourself? Of course, your father-in-law is great, but he is not very detail-oriented, so I have to do it with my hands to prevent any problems. Then it must be so hard for you. If I did the restaurant in the lobby, I could clean and manage it every day. Of course, you would do the work perfectly because you are so detail-oriented, just like me. Wait, as soon as the lease is over for that space in the lobby, I will make space for your restaurant. Really? These days, the restaurant has too many customers, so I thought that it would be perfect to open up another one. But it costs a lot of money to set it up, so you're our savior. Still, you have to pay the rent on time each month. Of course, with that location, the business will be even better. So I will not only pay the rent on time, but will give you generous spending money too. Really? This is the reason to have a daughter-in-law. Like someone who only has high pride when she has nothing. Nothing could be more disgusting. Really? What daughter-in-law would be like that? I hate that kind of person too. There's somebody like that. Very close. Oh, would you be able to come up on that day? That day? Of course. It's not any day but your birthday. I will come earlier on that day to prepare your birthday menu and take you shopping at a department store and doing a round. If you have anything you want, I will buy everything for you. Really? You have such a sense. You're like me and a big spender. Of course, Kathy, will you get a day off on that day? I have to wait to see. It's three months later, so it's hard to say, for sure. If possible, I would try to get a day off, but right now, I'm in charge of many important projects for the company. See? I don't know how important her work is, but she gets all high and mighty that she's working. How could people who have no jobs live? Kathy, it's because I got married before you. So I'm saying it, but when you get married, your family should be a priority over work. If you can't handle it, shouldn't you quit your work? Even though I didn't meet her many times, I couldn't put up with her stepping over the lines. It was ridiculous to confirm something that was three months away, but how could she tell me to quit my job if I couldn't handle it? I became so furious, so I just got up and left the house and went straight home. Then my husband, who was anxious on the last holiday, didn't even pay any attention, even though I left first, and he came back home, late drunk, and he must have heard something from his mother that he started to pick fights with me. You're being too much. How could a daughter-in-law leave your mother-in-law's house like that at a family gathering for the holidays? Do you know how angry my mom was after you left? She made a big scene that she was going to give everything to Jeffrey's family. Why do I have to endure that kind of treatment over the stupid property? I have no problem living without that money. But were you that kind of person originally? I didn't know you cared so much about money like that. I'm very disappointed. Disappointed? Is there anyone who dislikes money? You should be honest with yourself. You like money too. Isn't that why you're working? Don't act and pretend that you like your work. Instead, focus on the money that you can see in front of your eyes and try to be at least half as good as Jeffrey's wife. What? How dare you bring that person up? If you like money that much, you butter up to your parents. Why are you forcing me to do it? And if you have the eyes and ears, you know how your mother treats me. Do you see that? Yet, are you still asking me to do things like your sister-in-law? Are you saying that again? I'm also her son. If you keep saying bad things about my mom, I also have to say bad things about your dad. Don't you think I have no complaints about your dad? What? I know my dad is not a friendly person, but has he ever been rude to you? He can be rude to me a hundred times, and I'm okay with that. But don't you think I would want to get some help from my wife's family too? Of course, it's true that I married you out of love and without any conditions, but your family has less money than I thought. I was just speechless. Of course, I could understand what my husband was saying, 
My dad said he didn't need a large house for himself, so he lives in a small studio. Even to me, the way it is shown on the outside, no one could believe that my dad was the president of a large business. Still, how could my husband complain about it? I realized then that my husband wasn't the man I thought he was, and at the same time, my heart turned cold. But I don't know if God played a trick, but I was pregnant. But because we didn't get along, my husband wasn't very happy to hear that I got pregnant. My mother-in-law flatly warned me never to leave my baby with her for babysitting. And that's when I knew that I had no way to live happily in this household. Still, for my baby, I decided not to consider getting divorced. I knew very well how lonely my baby would feel growing up in a single-parent household. The uneasy relationship continued, and my mother-in-law's birthday came up. I was going to ask for a day off on that day, but because of my morning sickness, a lot of work had piled up. On top of that, the meeting dates with the company clients didn't work out, so I could not use the day off and headed to my in-law's house late after work. As soon as I entered the house, my mother-in-law glared at me coldly, and my sister-in-law smirking at me got on my nerves. But I suppressed my anger, since it was my mother-in-law's birthday. Kathy, you came. I thought you weren't coming. Really, I thought you forgot my birthday. I'm sorry. I tried to come as early as possible, so that must be that great work of yours again. When I look at you and your dad, both of you are very inconsiderate of others. Look at your sister-in-law. She came over early in the morning and made all this food and took me to the department store. A woman must have this kind of charm. Mother, stop. Kathy wasn't goofing around. Anyway, why didn't he come when he went out to buy the... I went out to buy the cake. He doesn't need to hurry. He went with his dad. Father and son must have a lot to talk, so they must be late. Anyway, when is Keith coming? Oh, he is busy these days, too, so I didn't have the chance to talk. You must not neglect your own husband. There's an old adage that a man needs a good wife. If you acted properly, wouldn't my son have talked to you? He's a friendly kid. After I got married to you, his face is always grim. If you continue to be that way, I will give all my money to Jeffrey's family. Do you understand? But you only need to live on that great job of yours and struggle on pennies, right? Right. I could no longer bear my mother-in-law and my smirking sister-in-law next to her, openly degrading me. If I put up with this now, I would have to continue putting up with them and I didn't want to show that to my baby to be born. So I decided to give an unforgettable gift to my mother-in-law. Mother, I told you before that I have no desire to get any of you and father's money. Right, but you have your pride, don't you? No, not only pride, but I have no need for any money. I'm sorry, but how much is your property worth? What? How could you ask that? My mother-in-law looked quite startled at my bold words. But my sister-in-law seemed curious about the money and she was focusing on the answer. And right then, my father-in-law and his younger son came in from buying the birthday cake. With my husband, who was at Cold War with me, arrived, and the situation got blown out of proportion. Honey, she's asking me how much is our assets. I can't believe her, but we have about $2 million, right? Oh, $2 million, is it? Just a minute. Right then, calmly, I used my mobile banking and opened up my savings account. Then I showed her the balance on my savings account. She looked at it for a while to count the amount. Then her face turned red and looked at me as if she couldn't believe it. How much is that? Why do you have so much money? Are you saying that you have more than $3 million? Oh, really? Kathy, how do you have so much in cash? Do you think it's only cash? Right in front of the house, in the major intersection, you know the building on the corner, right? That's my building. I don't know how you size down my dad, but, but he's the president of a manufacturing company. I told you that he was in business. You didn't ask after meeting him, so I didn't say. That business has been growing steadily since my grandfather's days. You keep talking about money and properties. Are you planning to give it as an inheritance? Then how much money would I inherit? Would I inherit from my dad? Do I need to live a pathetic life wishing that my dad would die so that I could get that money distributed to me? What? The way he was dressed, he didn't look like the president of a big business. If your father was the CEO, then you should have told us. Keith, why didn't you say anything to us? I didn't know either. 
I thought he was struggling to do some small business. Kathy, then how could you hide that so well from the family? Are you the one who was thinking something else? I clearly said that my dad was the president. Were you thinking of something else? I didn't mention it because I knew you would think of something else. Money is important, but I believe a person's worth is more important than money. But mother, you didn't treat me as a person. You only saw me as a means to get money, didn't you? Because I wasn't like your younger daughter-in-law who took advantage of you. You gave your money to her. But I refuse to play the role of a daughter-in-law in this kind of household. I will get a divorce. I said it and left. As soon as I came out, my husband didn't even have his shoes on and ran after me, trying to stop me. But I hated seeing him like that. Honey, I'm sorry. From beginning to end, it was my family's fault, and I was wrong. Please don't say we will get divorced. You're not alone either. I will sever my ties with my family. That includes you and our baby. Not just your family, but you as well. I don't think you're very nice people. Now that I have a lot of money, why are you clinging to me? Or are you acting so pathetically because now you can benefit from my father-in-law's wealth? Actually, there is no problem between you and me. I didn't know you had that much money, and I married you for love. But if you are asking for a divorce now, I feel it is unfair. Unfair? I feel it was unfair. I didn't know you were this kind of person. And I endured all those degrading treatments. I also loved you and was grateful that you chose me based on love. But because I saw the real you, I no longer want to live with you. If you continue to refuse, I will file a lawsuit, so be prepared for that. I immediately started the, the divorce proceedings. My husband had no intention of readily agreeing to the divorce, so we ended up going to court. My dad hired an attorney that he knew and helped me actively with my divorce since I was pregnant and I was able to get the divorce judgment. Once, I thought my dad had no interest in me, but through the divorce proceedings, he found out about my marriage and became furious at my husband and his family. He wanted to see the end of them. For the first time, I saw my dad like that. And actually, it wasn't that he wasn't interested in me, but he was always trying to do things that I wanted. A year later, my divorce was final. I also was able to receive a substantial compensation for my emotional distress from the abuses of my husband and my in-laws. My husband couldn't accept the judgment and made scenes many times by coming over to see me. But my dad protected me by acting very mean against my ex-husband, so he couldn't do anything more. I became a single mom, raising my child. My dad still tells me that he would do whatever for me if I ask him. But I feel I was responsible for the divorce. So I told him that I would not accept his help. I had already received so much from him, and I feel money is not an easy thing as my child grows up, so I want to teach that to my child. I want to show my hardworking side to my child, and fortunately, he is growing up well without his dad. Even though he's young, he says that he's a male, so he needs to protect me since I'm a female, and says things that make me emotional, but because I have a son like him, I am happy every day. I'm no longer lonely. I feel there's no right answer when it comes to life, but if I try my best to be upright, then that might be the answer to going on the right path. Thank you for listening to my story. Please cheer for me and write your comments of wisdom in the comments section. Pressing like and subscribing is a big help to me. Have a wonderful day.